Good evening, this time, <laughs> a little later than usual. Welcome to my daily chat, and welcome to episode, episode number 499. Yeah, we're getting close, as in tomorrow is the grand 500. Um, topic today, before I get into introducing myself, is he's not a fixer-upper. I'll explain that one, although you may not need much explanation. Before I get to that, let me introduce myself. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful women attract and find and create balance in love, and life, and business, and I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And every day I do these talks, usually at 5 p.m. Pacific time, but I'm busy this weekend, so at 7 p.m. Pacific time today, um, called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And today we're at number 499. One more, one more. Um, and the title today is... He's not a fixer-upper. And this came out of a conversation actually yesterday. I started making some notes because I was just, I would say appalled, but it wasn't my place. But the recognition about how some women, I mean, men have done it too, but usually it's much more about women doing it for men who will seek out a male partner that they want to improve. Either they get to meet the relationship and realize they want to make it better once they're in it, or they seek out a man that they can build up for their own edification or in self-esteem. It's a very messed up, codependent, functional thing, and I'll talk about that a bit more. But the recognition is that some people don't choose a relationship from the highest place, and I'll explain that a bit more too, I think. We'll see. These are unscripted, so I appreciate you being here, and let's see where this goes. So first of all, I'll throw a question out there at the beginning. It almost ties into not no no I'm not going there. Sorry, I've got two other topics brewing and I don't want to put them out tonight. I intend to keep this one short to the point because it's been a long day. Um, <laughs> I don't want to say this. What are your standards when it comes to dating? I'll start there. Do you actually make choices that stretch you to your better yet to be? Hi, Michelle. Nice to see you. Hello to you too. And I think I saw Ellen there briefly as well. My love, my dear friend Elle. I haven't seen her forever. Um, so staying on topic do you, do you set your standards high in relationships do you date or do you choose dates that are pushing you to your best because most people aren't and I'm saying it this way to say that people aren't necessarily raising their standards of what they want in a relationship and so they settle for less than they deserve they settle for less than they want and they settle for less than they can have because there's some wiring inside of them that says they don't deserve it. And for a lot of people, and this is both sides, by the way, they may have a vision of a relationship that's going to be up there somewhere, but their reality of what they choose to pick from, as in their choices they make, is a lot less than that. As in they may choose a relationship that's less ideal. They will settle for less of the um, must-haves, requirements, just so they can have someone to love. And I've talked about the codependent model a few times before. But I also want to talk about the self-esteem level too, because I believe that we date from our self-esteem. Double checking that's true. <laughs> it's pretty true. We tend to run our dating um, experiences from how we feel about ourselves. If your self-esteem is low, you'll actually find someone who will either raise your spirits or you can drown your sorrows with. Or someone who will make you feel better because of who they are isn't as um, inspiring as they could be. I'm being careful I word this just so you're wondering why I'm pausing all the time. I think put some nice words on this because otherwise I'd be saying, don't do that. That may still happen. We'll see. So what I'm trying to get to the point of realizing, realizing and what I get to the point of is that a lot of times our dating choices are undermining our success. Having worked with quite a few clients in fact most of the clients I've worked with who have chosen relationships that really sucked ultimately either because they, they went out with a narcissist or they went with someone who hurt them abused them or cheated on them or basically someone didn't step up and become the passionate lover they wanted and the thing is they've gotten trained to think that's normal this is the thing rewinding a little bit your dating choices again you may not be getting what you really want because it's up here somewhere but you're getting something down here there's something down here the lower level, as it were, is really um, aligned to your history and your programming, your belief systems, your rules, your subconscious, all that stuff. 
And so even though you may have a clear intention, I want to have a vision, the relationship's going to be amazing and wonderful and magical and beautiful and everything else up here, what you keep getting is lower. If that's happening to you, listen up. Having... So this, having a clear intention is a great start. However, if you're getting less than you've asked for, there's a 99.9% .9 likelihood you're running beliefs that don't support you. In fact, you're running beliefs that are so rigid, you don't even know they're there. This is going to get scary for some people out there, I know. Maybe you, maybe somebody you know. And the, the trick, the thing about this is, it won't be something you'll see up front. This is the, weir the, the weirdest part. It's the most surprising part, because the reality is what's happening when you go out on dates is what you're attracting to you is not necessarily what you put in your profile or wrote on your vision or wrote on your your um actually there isn't a term for that journaling i guess if you wrote in your journal or your vision board you created all that stuff you created what shows up in your relationship nine times out of ten isn't that it may look like that at the beginning and this is the thing at the beginning is very different from when you get into the relationship so you might meet somebody who is extremely caring and attentive and fun and joyful and and generous all these different things and then six months into the relationship you find out they're a narcissist and trying to gaslight you or they're abusing you. This has happened to you before. This is something I hope you want to change. And the reason why I think you want to change it is because if you're watching this and you know that this is not right working, you're going to want some help. So I'll make this very clear. The reason why this is happening is because your belief systems are running much more powerfully than your awareness. Sorry, it was Jermaine, you said you try to read that. I didn't have my glasses on. I tend. You tend to search and desire an equal, not in the perfect sense, but equal in in ethereal frame of life, this life. That's pretty cool. <laughs> but here's the thing I want to make a comment about. Once you, once you meet the person, which may be good up front, the experience once you get into a relationship may or may not be as good as that. As in, things may go downhill, or they will be, I won't say violating, but they will be not aligning with your vision. Because you may have discovered either one, your vision is only on the surface and the external, which is one thing, which is usually not quite the, the case, but often it sometimes is. But more likely is the fact that you're attracting somebody that reminds you of your younger childhood. Yes, I've done that one again. Or your past relationships. Because a lot of times, not only is it we get trained as a child in our relationships with our parents to how relationship works, we also tend to get imprinted by early relationships too. Yes, I'm adding something to my usual talk. And that means that if you start dating men, if you're a woman, or dating women if you're a man, if you're straight, that is. I'm like, this is getting too complicated. If you're dating some, if you're attracted to somebody, dating somebody in your younger dating life, late teens, early twenties, that goes awry, that goes off track. You might start picking up habits that will attract the next relationship to you the same way, and the one after that. For some people, they've had a twenty-year marriage or thirty-year marriage with somebody like that. When they get out, they don't know what to do because one, they don't know what the dating scene's like, and secondly, they are very clear they don't want to go back. When you're in the situation, that's when we talk. <laughs> and if you've actually been repeating that cycle more than once and had the same experience again and again and you want to change that we should talk because what you what you need help with and I'm saying you need help with this because it's very hard to do on your own is to disengage all that programming and that belief structures that you've been running either as a young adult or as a kid and change the wiring it's like rewiring the car so it works so your choices become more aligned to your true values and more aligned to your intentions because the problem that you've been running is your um, search criteria that you have up here in your conscious mind is being trampled, as being decimated, is being reduced. <clears throat> you, you can be simply doing all right. Well, I'm glad to hear it, Jermaine. I'm glad to hear you're doing well in that sense. That's good. Um, so, so subconscious programming is going to trample or obliterate your conscious intentions because it is more powerful. And if you're wondering why dating choices have shown up the same way for the last six, seven relationships or years or more, you may discover there's something going on that isn't your choice because you don't think you're doing it intentionally. You're not. Your subconscious mind is. And this understanding of the way the psyche works, your mind, the understanding is, can actually change the way you do relationships. And ultimately, you can have what you really want. However, or and, your requirements or should say your um, opportunity 
if you want to change the wiring, if you're not getting what you want, is to figure out what's change, what's what, what's running the show the wrong way. That's in your subconscious that's not doing the job. That's where I come in. Um, I'll tell you now, I recommend you having a talk with me at least, a 30 minute chat, because we can at least get through some of the blocks, see where you're going, and you hope you get where you want to go. I'll put the link in the comments afterwards, but basically if you go to my net website, which is barrysubby.com forward slash chat, you can sign up for a discovery session right there. Yes, you can go find books. You can go see a therapist, say it's another idea too. Um, I'm not a therapist. I have a background in psychology, but I have a background in a lot of things that inclusively make up me as what I would call um, <clears throat> a relationship attraction expert. I don't like using the word coach because that's implications of a 10-step system and I don't have systems. I go where the heart goes. But this is the thing. Even if you don't do that, your focus, your opportunity, your intention, your um, desire, there's a good word, your desire is best served when you know what you really want and when you get yourself out of the way so you can get it. Because this is the thing, you may have a clear intention, but you're getting in the way of it because your subconscious is driving the show, as I said. When you can get yourself out of the way properly, effectively, then your intentions can work. But it takes a little help, a little understanding, and a little guidance. So when I put the title about he's a fixer-upper, it's true for the other way around too. But again, the majority of the time, women tend to pick men that aren't as good for them because they're fixer-uppers, rather than men choosing women they are not good for them. So that was the reason I spun the title that way. So my point to make this succinct is make better choices. <laughs> this is the best thing I can say. And if you're having a problem making better choices, I'll put, again, you've got the link so you can find out how, to, how I can help you with that. Um, this is a quick broadcast. To be honest, I'm a little bit fried. It's been a long day. I've been shooting pictures all day at my friend's event. And I want to put this out there just to give you some food for thought. I've got actually another talk for... T I was going to do it tonight, but I'm going to do that one tomorrow or Monday because that one goes a lot deeper. Um, but I'm not telling you what it is yet. <laughs> Um, I think that's really it. I mean, I made the point clear enough. If you want help, get help. That simple. If you're not getting what you want in relationships and you can't figure out what it is, get someone to help you who can guide you. I recommend myself because I know what I'm doing. And I've got my second book came out Tuesday. I feel a quick plug for that. Oh, excuse me a second. So I've now got a physical copy of it. This, ta da, is Love Revolution, the real deal. And I'm on the back. Um, there, I think. Is that me there? No. There, that's me on the back. <laughs> I'm in the book. I've got an email from the free gift. See, I'll just show you. Um, where are we? Can I find the pictures? just want to show you the pictures so you can see it. Uh, there we go. See? My picture of the book. Oh, there we are on the screen. So there you go. On Amazon, you can get it yourself now. It's out officially released. Love Revolution. Stories that radically change the way we love. 26 stories that will change your life. There's a little plug for that. I'll put the link for the Amazon link in the comments. You can go get it yourself. Um, that's my second book, first book. You've been out for a bunch of years, which is 50 Ways. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover is my other book. 50 Principles for Healthy Relationships for Singles or Couples. I'll even put that link in the comments too, so you get two for. Um, I think that's it. You've got, the, you've, got the, you've got the gist of my message, I trust. I hope this helps you get some clarity, get some direction, and some next steps. Um, yeah. So, tomorrow's broadcast is number 500. That's the big 500. I don't know if I'll do something deep or not. We'll see how I'll play with that. I've got a couple of topics brewing, pending. We'll see if they show up. Maybe something different. I'm open to new ideas. We'll see what comes through. Um, cool. Thank you, Jimmy. Yeah, so I'll put the link in the comments. You can go to the Amazon links. You can go. It's actually on my page somewhere. I did it a couple of days ago. It came out Tuesday. So we're just knocking it out and getting it up in, out in the world. And by the way, uh, I'll give you this too. On the back there, that little logo there, that's Bellamia Publishing. If you can only read it in there, but Bellamia Publishing. I'm, I'm, uh, what's what I'm looking for? My business partner and I started this company to publish other books. So if you're looking for help with your book, reach out to me. There's a little plug for my services. Um, and that's it. Oh, reminders. This is a Facebook Live, 7 p.m. Pacific time, later than usual. Normally tomorrow's, normally 5 p.m. Tomorrow's going to be late too, I think, because I don't think I'll have time to speak at 5 p.m. tomorrow. We'll see what happens. I'm at the hotel then. I appreciate being with you, as always. Um, this is my Facebook Live that goes onto YouTube and then onto podcasts. I'll give you the links. So if you're looking for my other broadcasts on Facebook Live, they get archived on my business page because that's 
all that's on there, which is Barry Selby, the author, on Facebook. They then put onto YouTube, where you can subscribe to my channel, which is Barry Selby, and the playlist is message, Messages from the Masculine. And secondly, thank you, thank you, I'm glad you enjoyed the talks, Michelle, appreciate it. Um, and then also, they go, the audio version goes onto my podcast eventually, it's still getting there, and that is uh, Messages from the Masculine on um, iTunes. Subscribe, download there. All right, thank you for watching, I appreciate you being with me, and I will see you again tomorrow for the Big 500. Um, I'll announce on Facebook when it's going to be. It's probably going to be out this time or maybe later tomorrow. We'll see. But I appreciate you being with me and uh, I will see you again tomorrow. Take care. Oh, and I'll put the link in the comments. See you tomorrow. Bye.